So are you taking the upcoming management case study exam and not knowing what to do, not knowing what topics to study because the syllabus is so vast, what case study topics come up in the exam? Then you're in the right place because this video has been created to discuss the management case study exam top issues that we have gathered after years of experience, after speaking to students and after seeing SEMA template exams, we've come down and narrowed down to these 10, 11 top exam topics which we feel often come up in the exam and we are sure that this video is going to be helpful for students studying the management case study exam. So my name is Devansh, you would have already been on the channel and been introduced to me. I am the lead tutor at FinTutors and we are SEMA accredited and registered tuition providers. So all the information that we give you is well backed by experience, is well backed by expertise. So, so you can you know rely on it, you can study in the direction that we give and you would see the results of the same. So you might be wondering what are these topics and how do we accumulate them? First and foremost, we focus on the pre-scene. Students studying with us or students that have studied with us or if you just visit our YouTube channel, you would see that the pre-scene analysis that we do is very, very detailed. We go into the depth, we go into, you know, we just try to pick the underlying theme that the pre-scene suggests. When we read the pre-scene, we try to identify issues with the pre-scene, problems with the company, and then we match them with specific topics that Seema asks and try to create a list that gives students focused study on topics that often come up in the exam while they write mock questions with us. So just by going through the E2, P2 and F2 material, it's not going to be a positive experience in the exam. Just by going through the pre-scene, it's not going to be a positive experience in the exam. The actual value is added when both of these combine, which means students write mock questions with us. We make our students practice very, very much. We make our students do 25 mock exam questions before their exam date. So you can imagine the level of preparedness that they have because we have blueprint explanations, which no other tutor does. Our blueprint specific explanations show the syllabus areas that students must study. I'll leave the link to our blueprint explanation video on your screen or in the description below. You'll be able to view it. It's available on YouTube itself. We also do a very detailed pre-scene which comes up to three hours or so. And then we do exactly exam style mock writing. And each question that is submitted by the student is marked, checked and corrected by us. So we accumulate these topics with a lot of effort and with a lot of time that's given to the perspective. And obviously because of the experience and expertise of our tutors and myself, we've been able to identify exam favorite topics. And through this video, we are going to share the same with you. Let's begin without wasting any time. Before I begin, I just want to make it clear that these topics that we are going to do, we have 10 or 11 important topics for you. We are going to present them chronologically for you. But it doesn't mean that topic number one is the most important topic and topic number 10 is the least important topic. Not at all. All of these 10, 11 topics that we have identified for you are important. They are not arranged in such a way that we are going from least important to most important. No, all of these are important topic areas, important syllabus areas, which can come up in your exam and which have often been tested in your exam. And we have found them important while we went through the pre-scene. And that is why we had to, you know, bring them up to you. That is why we had to point them out to you. So topic number 10 or important area 10 is funding related issues. Now funding related issues is very prominent in your piping beverages pre-scene because the business and the company is or rather the environment that the company is situated in is quite I'll say uh, capital intensive a one where capital is going to be needed which has been made evident in the pre-scene 
and in our pre-scene analysis. So we saw funding as an area that can definitely come up in your exam. So what type of questions can you expect? So they can give you a very straightforward question analyzing the current weighted average cost of capital. So they can give you your company's current WAC situation. They can tell you that your weighted average cost of capital right now is, for example, 10%. What does this mean? What does weighted average cost of capital mean? They'll ask you because not everybody at the board of directors level knows or has a finance background, knows what WAC means. So you're supposed to explain. They may also say that we are going for a new project. So, and we are going to raise debt. How will it affect the weighted average cost of capital? You should know what WAC means, how WAC moves upwards and downwards, what are the forces that influence the weighted average cost of capital. This is directly from your F2 syllabus. A second scenario is they can, you know, raise a question, raise a scenario and say that we need funds. And hence they asked you a recommendation of different funding options. Definitely can come up you should be able to give different funding suggestions like different debt instruments, different equity instruments and explain options under each. Under equity, what options do you have? You know, raising share capital because you're already a listed company, rights issues, you know, those are questions, that those are suggestions that you can put forward. For debt as well, you can put it forward looking at your company's financials. It's a very common question in the exam. And along with long-term finance options, they can ask you for short-term finance options as well. So you should be able to suggest both. These are common exam scenarios that come up and all of these are part of your F2 syllabus. So just see the comprehensive nature of our identification of the topics here. The first thing is we will do, you know, we showcase to you our study notes. Then we showcase to you our uh, you know, learnings, the specific learnings, then we do the industry analysis, then the pre-scene analysis, then we teach you how to write mock questions. And along with that, we are giving you these important topics. So just see your level of preparation. When you've gone through these topics, when you've gone through our notes, and then when you've written 25 exam style questions, like we give our students, and then you go into your exam hall, and one of these topics comes up. Just imagine how prepared you're going to be, the level of confidence that you're going to have. That is the whole reason why we create our course and that is the whole reason why our course is so comprehensive. So make sure any ideas that we give you, you use to your benefit because these are important ideas and important suggestions that is coming from a registered tuition provider like us. Moving on to area nine. So through these topics, we are trying to point out important syllabus areas that can be tested by looking at this pre-scene. And then we are telling you where you can study them from as well. Topic 10, you can study from F2. It's the first two chapters itself. Topic 9 is pricing related. Now, if you went through the piping beverages pre-scene and my pre-scene analysis, you would have seen that pricing our product has been an issue for the company. The company is premium pricing and it's majorly situated in Northlandia, which is its current country. It's not expanding or is not looking to expand into other global markets. So there can be very many pricing questions that can come your way. It is part of your P2 syllabus. So it's a very important part. And it's also part of your blueprints or the ICANN statements or the core areas that are identified by SEMA. So it is a topic that can surely come up. What are the types of questions that come up? Now they can mention that we are entering a new market or we are introducing a new kind of tea, a new kind of tea beverage. What pricing strategy should we follow? So you must know the different market-based pricing strategies that are available. So you must know the different pricing strategies, what your current company's pricing strategy is, what are the current core values of your company. And according to that, you should be able to present an answer. This is directly from your P2 syllabus. So pricing, uh, your different pricing strategies, very, very important to know. 
A second very common question is transfer pricing related issues. They can say that we buy, you know, when we're setting up a new company in XYZ country, that is where we'll be buying the tea from. And then we'll, we'll be transferring that tea from that company to our current base or current factory. How will the transfer pricing system work? Very straightforward situation I created for you over here. We've also created an exactly exam styled mock question on transfer pricing. But right now I'm just giving you an example that yes, this scenario can come up. So to answer this scenario, you must know the different transfer pricing methods. What does transfer pricing mean? You must know the advantages and the disadvantages of market based transfer pricing, cost based transfer prices. You must know what transfer pricing to its core means and its advantages and disadvantages. Why is it done? So these are pointers which you must be clear about because they have been tested before. They will be tested in my mocks and they surely can be tested in the final exam. So through these topics, we show you important syllabus areas which you must study. And then we'll be doing mock questions on them to summarize and very, very strongly supplement your study. So when you enter the exam hall, you don't have any ambiguities as to, you know, what can come up, what will come up. You know that major core areas I know. I've practiced my writing as well. So no matter what they throw at me, I know the method, I know the pattern, I will be able to answer. You see how confident my mindset is? Yours will be the same if you have studied along the lines that we showcase to you. Now to topic eight, which speaks about the business oriented questions. Now in the MCS, obviously you're given the role of a finance manager. So you can be asked to evaluate any situation that they place in front of you. One of those situations could be that they can ask you a question like which functions of your organization are adding value, not adding value. So you'll need to do that value analysis with the help of the Porter's value chain topic, which is part of your E2 syllabus. A common question will also be to evaluate the current business model of your business. And what if we are about to change this? What if we are implementing a new strategy? What if we are expanding? How will this business model, you know, be affected? So a good analysis of the pre scene plus your E2 topics of value analysis, value chain analysis is important. Next, you can have issues surrounding leadership problems. Management and leadership issues occur in our business and hence you could be asked to evaluate them. There's this issue in the packaging department. How will you solve it? So these are often exam questions. Next, how will you deal with the conflict? You know how to manage this particular conflict. Can you use the balance scorecard to, you know, present a good performance appraisal method? Or can you use the balance scorecard to make sure good indicators are set so that there are no conflicts? Again, part of your E2 syllabus. So value related topics and business related topics, anything of this sort can come up where they ask you to evaluate a situation. You may have to use your E2 knowledge for the same and I gave you an example of it. So this is an important area for us to note. Topic seven, which we feel is important is project management issues. So project management is a vast area and really important from your, uh, you know, management case study exam perspective, because a lot of project related topics have been recently coming up in the exams. So what kind of questions come up? Again, that's what you'll be having in your mind, right? So first is what are the different project management tools? This is often asked. They'll ask you, we are starting a new project. What project management tools can we use? So that knowledge again from your E2 syllabus will be vital over here. Next, what are the, what are the different constraints that a project faces and the life cycle of a project? Again, important. Same way you can be given a critical path analysis diagram. They can provide the diagram to you. You need to explain what that diagram means, how you'll make an, uh, make a decision based on that diagram. So your critical path analysis studies from your E2 syllabus 
very very important now what are the tools used to make sure a project is completed with efficiency so here you can quote your planning of activities planning of time planning of resources in your own words so your work based structures time based structures from your project management topics in e2 can be useful here because they are often asked in the exam so what tools can you use to make sure a project is completed with efficiency project management tools constraints that a project faces critical path analysis these are important segments from the project management issues which is part of core area b so what we are doing is we are giving you the topic we are giving you the core area and then we are showcasing to you what kind of questions can come up and where you can study them from from your syllabus so just imagine if you this level of preparedness and then you are writing mock questions on these topics which are being marked checked and corrected by individuals which we do for our students obviously then your level of readiness for the exam is going to be very high and that's why we are here and that's why studying with a registered tuition provider adds value to your preparation now we have investment appraisal techniques that we are speaking about this is part a of our core areas this is a very uh, you know topic that's repeated that we'll always repeat because it will definitely come up in the exam some way somehow in one of the variants because it's an important analysis of a manager's decision making ability which project to choose so what type of questions will come up here so the project tables could be provided with different investment appraisal techniques you have to choose the best project for your company so let's say they'll give the projects npv analysis they'll give you the projects irr analysis mirr analysis then you'll have to say and they'll give it for two or three different projects you will then have to choose which project is the best and provide explanations of why you chose that project so the knowledge of what is npv what is irr what is payback arr mirr discounted payback is very important so they can ask us to look at any of the tables that are given and you should have knowledge of these different investment appraisal techniques to provide an explanation so investment appraisal techniques given you may need to analyze why a particular method is chosen the concept of capital rationing time value of money is also one that you should know and all of this is from your p2 syllabus in chapters 5 and 6 so we are pointing out the type of topics come up where you can study it from what kind of study you need to do there are no sum solvings you don't have to go into the details of anything simply need to know what each system is how it works couple advantages couple disadvantages of each investment appraisal technique and that will be enough this is the preparation stage then the application stage is where you actually write mock questions on these topics you can sign up with us for one of these for writing mock questions where they are written on the on our exam portal which is exactly like the exam and each question that is submitted is personally marked checked and corrected for every student just imagine how prepared you will be when you've studied it practiced it got it corrected know how to write then you enter the exam and any investment appraisal technique related question comes up you are going to be ready and the you know you know what to do so that level of preparedness confidence comes only if you know what you are doing and that is why we are here to make your study a little bit easier better and focused same way they can ask you costing and pricing part of core area c and core area a so costing is a different topic pricing is a different topic students on uh, you know always confuse this as one but it's very very different costing is more internal how you set the cost of the product how you decide on the cost of the product or how you arrive at the cost of the product pricing is the price you'll charge to the customer when you sell the product or the service whatever so what type of questions come up costing system is what is your current costing system and what if we move to another costing system 
mostly ABC is a favorite exam question activity based costing so they can say that right now you have a absorption costing or marginal costing system you want to move to activity based costing what will be the changes what is ABC what are the advantages so you should know what each costing system is now decisions made to move to a different costing system can also be asked let's say change to target costing life cycle costing this is often asked in the exam so a study of absorption costing it's how it works advantages disadvantages marginal costing how it works advantages disadvantages activity based costing how it works advantages disadvantages target costing life cycle costing how it works advantages disadvantages need to be known very clearly now they often give us a costing schedule with all the relevant numbers cost pools cost drivers we then have to break down the information and explain how abc is useful for example i'm saying they can give you all the cost pools all the cost drivers all the numbers in the question you just simply have to use them explain them and put in your own explanations as to what is a cost pool what does this cost pool mean what does this cost driver means so you know it will be you know it, it will be a good experience if you've gone through it and then practiced it in relation to your specific case study exam so costing and pricing are often asked and it's an important topic area now we have important area four consolidation explained acquisitions and disposals part of d and e of your core areas so what kind of acquisition questions can i expect now changes that would occur on consolidation so what does consolidation mean you may have to start there if we acquire a new company today what would be the next steps that can be asked to explain so what is consolidation that could be asked to explain to you this is your f2 syllabus straight away the first chapter on group accounts is explaining why and what is consolidation next you can also have potential impact of consolidating a foreign subsidiary so your ias 21 should be clear the concepts of ias 21 because they can tell you that we are acquiring a new multinational subsidiary for example how will we account for it you know what will be the foreign exchange rules that we'll have to look at so is 21 concepts quite important next impact on the acquisition on the consolidated financial statements they can ask you how goodwill will affect if i buy this company what will be the post acquisition profits dealing what will be you know the net assets dealing how will we record it how does it look like what is the net assets calculation like you won't have to do the calculation but you may have to explain the calculation so they ask you to provide an explanation this is straight from your f2 syllabus the consolidation basics consolidation treatments in your own words are required because these are exam favorite topics which do come up in the exam next we have important ias and ifrs topics that we must know again part of your core area e these are important international accounting standards international financial reporting standards that are asked in the exam so what type of questions come up first we will speak about is 33 earnings per share so you will be given all the details and numbers which you must use to identify which costs can be capitalized and which not along with reasons this also brings in your topic of consolidated statement of changes in equity so which are the earnings how to record the earnings per share how the recording works what is the consolidated statement of changes in equity you should know that next you can have questions revolving around provisions contingent assets contingent liabilities how to record a provision when to record a provision when to record a contingent asset contingent liability they can give you the details and ask you if you should recognize it then you'll have to tell them according to the rules this is what it is and then see the question does it match those rules yes okay then you record the provision or record the contingent asset but you'll need that knowledge 
same way associates and joint arrangement accounting is also often asked they can ask you we are purchasing 20 percent of this company becomes an associate we are buying uh, you know we are getting into a joint arrangement for this particular company how to record you'll have to provide the explanations same way intangible asset recognition and measurement is also often asked these are all IASs from your f2 syllabus only so your concept of you know related parties is also often asked integrated reporting also asked so these questions are pretty straightforward when it comes to a uh, an IS or an IFRS because they'll tell you how to record the provision you'll have to provide the answer how to account for the associate you'll have to provide the answer so these are important syllabus areas that you must revise to get a good grip upon and explanation when the time comes Topic number two now, which is important, is debt or equity, sources of funds. So the question of debt or equity is a consistent one. This is part of your core area A. What type of questions come up? They can ask for a current WAC analysis. They can give you your company's current WAC, weighted average cost of capital, and then ask you to explain what WAC means. So it is important to know the parts of weighted average cost of capital equity debt how the weighted average cost of capital goes up and down you should know that this is your f2 first couple chapters itself they can create a scenario where we need funds and hence they ask you recommendations for different funding options you should be able to give them multiple funding options like debt or equity and explain options under each. So for debt, these are the options that we have. Equity, these are the options that we have. This is part of your F2 syllabus straight away. This is very common question in the exam. So different long-term finance options, short-term finance options, they are also asked and you should be able to suggest them. So an important analysis of what is WAC, what is debt, what is equity, Types of debt options in long term and short term. Types of debt options in, uh, you know, long term and short term. Types of equity options in long term and short term should also be known with clarity and you should be able to suggest them. To the first topic we come now. We worked our way from the 10th topic to the first topic. As I've mentioned at the very beginning, this is not the most important topic and topic 10 was not the least important topic. No, these are not chronologically arranged. We've just given you 10 topics which we feel are important, which we feel can come up in the exam and which we feel are, you know, all are important. That's what we feel and we want to give you the best chance to revise so that if any of these topics come up, you do a good job in the exam. So this topic is digital aspects, a very upcoming topic. This is part of your core area A. So what type of questions come up? Big data and its application. So benefits and drawbacks of big data often asked straight from the E2 syllabus. Next, the digital technology in your ecosystem. So understanding your business model and suggesting digital upgrades. How can you make your business better can also be asked. How can we better the experience of our customers using the digital systems? And what is a digital ecosystem? and suggest one which our company can follow. These are very technical topics straight from your E2 syllabus in chapters one and three. So, you know, it's important that you know what are the different digital ecosystem types. What is the digital upgrades that, you're, that you can suggest for your business? These ideas are present in E2 for you. And after this, we have another set of topics which we feel are important which we've listed out as other common important areas we've listed them out for you which you can go through to finish up this important topic analysis video so that has got us to the end of this video as you can see the material that we create is very comprehensive it's not something that has been made overnight it's something that we've really worked upon that we are confident about and when you, you know, sign up with us, all your exam chronology is handled by us, which means every single thing about your exam comes from us. 
we give you the revision material, we give you the pre-seen material, we give you the mock questions which are marked, checked and corrected. Everything comes from us. You simply have to follow the same. So in the description below, I'm going to leave the link to our MCS page. You can click on it, visit the website, see the different study options that we have and quickly sign up to one of the study options that best suits your needs and begin studying with us. Because when you study with a registered tuition provider who is as hands-on as we are, then it completely changes your preparation for the exam. I'm not saying that all of these topics will come up in the exam, there are no guarantees, but we'll prepare you in a way that no matter what comes up in the exam, you will be ready. That will be your mindset. That will be your confidence level. But for that, starting early is key, starting quick is key, and following the direction that we give is key. Thank you for being here. Hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you soon in another section or another set of videos that we create. Thank you.